Hello. Hello. Welcome back. We are back and we are black. We have a surprise for you guys. Before we even get into the Bravo episode, we finally got to talk to someone from Summer House Martha's Vineyard. We are going to make that available for everyone. Okay. It's gonna be where is it gonna be at Aaron? Because Aaron handles all those things. I just it's like to announce. Be- on patreon.com slash bravo wild black it's an it's a little incentive for our patreon members who are already a part of our team and everything but we wanted to make this uh all what what do they call that shit a public service announcement Mm -hmm. So you guys can head to the Patreon. No, you don't have to subscribe to watch. But if you do want to subscribe, feel free because we put out additional content there. Yeah, we actually just put out content. Like Aaron did a review of, can you say it? Because you love to say it. Uh, La Roche Posay. La Roche Posay. La Roche Posay. And then I did my letterbox style um, interview. Well, not interview, but I gave my answers. My whole family answered, and it was a fun bit. But anyways, this this will be free. Well, shout out, Nick. Thank you, Nick, for coming on. Thank you for giving us a chance. And also, we will be watching the show. Y'all better be watching Summer House, not this video. It comes on right after the Better be. This Sunday, baby, it is going down. Basement. Okay. Obviously, we have things to get to. Bravo Liberty. There are so, okay. The most pressing matter. I'm sorry. The most pressing matter actually is Karen Huger got into a car accident, a pretty serious one, to the point where the car had to be like towed. It couldn't be driven. Mm-hmm. We are sending our thoughts, our prayers, yes. our well wishes to the Grand Dame. She did receive a citation. I don't know what for. Um, we hope that she is okay because that really shook me. Yeah, um, praying for her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, TMZ has been on fire, but that's the one that is like it needs our immediate attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing that's just kind of like housekeeping. I don't know if anyone here cares, but if you do, Larsa and Marcus broke up again. Did you know that? Oh, they did. They'll be back together. Oh, you think they are? Yeah. They said apparently this time it's supposed to be permanent because cameras aren't really rolling right now. I don't Lisa, think. go to hell. <laughs> Bro, long story. yeah, long story short, because they'll be back together. They're trying to come up with something. That's what it mm-hmm. seems like to me. This is going to be Larsa's redemption season where she's going to lean on the other ladies to, for their emotional support. And then when they don't give it to her because she's been an asshole all season, then she's yep. going to be like, nobody's here for me. <laughs> Nobody cares. I'm yeah, sorry for that. I don't give a single flying flea bag fuck about this. Um, so what... Uh, we do need to get to obviously all the Atlanta tea. Let's get into it. First, tell us about this person who was adjacent to Sheree. So well, they it got is casting news, allegedly. Allegedly, they cast the Angela Reed, who is married to Charles Oakley. And Charles Oakley used to date Sheree back in the day. And we don't give a fuck at all. I, well, I can't say we, because you guys no, you can might care. You can, I, don't, well, I don't care at all. I feel like nobody asked for this. Bravo, please stop playing with me. Because I literally said it in the comments. Y'all are pissing me off so bad. Give Nene that peach or give somebody else a peach. Give Go to Kim Zosiak. Go to Lisa Wu. Go to somebody that we care about. Why are we going to Charles Oak? Why are we asking... Charles Oakley's wife to be on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oakley shades, shoddy got class, oh, behave. Like, yes. have we reached that point of desperation? I don't, I just realized that I actually don't know who Charles Oakley is because I realize in real time right now, having that realization that Charles Oakley and Charles Barkley are not the same person. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, it's not so really. Now I care even less because now I don't even know who the fuck that is. 
I mean, he seems like a pretty cool guy. I want to say he's the one that has that cooking show. And I remember the cooking show specifically because my girl, shout out to Lisa Ray, she was on it. Yes, yes, that's absolutely him. Now okay. I remember it's a thousand percent him. He has that cooking show. And I was mm -hmm. like, hmm. And he do cook some good lamb chops. I'm not going to lie. Shout out to you, Charles, but I do not care about Angela. Keep her wherever she is. I don't give a fuck about him, his lamb chops, or... Anyways, so what we really also need to get to is the thing that's been going on with Mimi and Portia. Let's break it down. Because we couldn't break it down on Wednesday's episode because that was a pop culture episode. But here is pop culture meets Bravo. And Aaron already said, listen, we don't want the peach to go to Charles Oakley's wife, who Sheree's. Like, it's just, it just doesn't even make any sense because we don't even know if Sheree's coming back also. I so, also want to say, too, they're, they're also, Shamia might possibly be getting the peach. I don't want that. Stop playing with me. I did not ask for that. Shamia is not going to, it's not going to work. Respectfully. Shamia's fine as candy. Spraying candy is not on the show anymore. We don't need it. We do have Portia and I get, yeah, they might be friends, but I just don't need Shamia as a peach holder. I just don't want to see it. I don't need it. Take it away. Stop. I like yeah, I like I don't know. When Portia was announced, we felt like we were going on the right track. And then unofficially they said Portia drew Kenya. And I felt like that was a solid foundation to build around. But the people that you're picking, if this is a legend, I don't know. I don't know. But maybe you know what? We might be wrong because they are taking their time with it. And I pray. I'm just hoping that we're wrong. And I, I hope that pray. also these rumors are just that. Because I didn't see... Did you see B. Scott report that? Because usually I, I wait until B. Scott says... No, I didn't see B. Scott. I seen that on Twitter. And I know, I do know that they're just throwing names out there. But that one stuck with me because it seemed believable. And that's why well, I was like, please yeah. don't do that. Yeah, it was on the Neighborhood Talk, which is why I was like, okay, so this might be feasible. Usually they try to report some, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Anyway, so speaking of Portia, Mimi, we thought they was cool. Last time we seen them, they was hanging out together. You know, Mimi is dating a, a guy who is friends with Simon, which is where these problems stem from, apparently. Okay, y'all know the Upshaws. Solid as a rock. Um, it's a show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it's a show on Netflix. It's a hilarious show. Wanda Sykes not only produces it, but she stars in it next to Mike Epps and former Real Housewives of Atlanta star uh, Kim. You know Kim. Tootie. So mm -hmm. apparently the story is they wanted housewives for a scene or a cameo or whatever it was going to be Mimi and it was going to be Portia and they were supposed to star in it and then um Mimi got word that Portia allegedly told producers that she's hard to work with and I think that we went over this a little bit and Mimi hit up Portia and was like why would you tell them that because that is going to hurt my reputation because you already know that you know I'm kind of People are sus when working with me nowadays because I'm kind of semi-blacklisted and I'm trying to get my name back out there. In general, even if that wasn't the case, she thought her and Portia were cool. Point blank and period. So much so that she's like, we just saw each other. We just hung out with each other. Blah, blah, blah. Blase, blase. So now, allegedly, the text messages have been released. And I'm going to read it to you guys. So this is also from the Neighborhood Talk. We got it from all about the A or straight from the A, yeah. So she said that basically Portia said that Nini chose a side. So Nini, when she heard that Portia said that she could not work with Nini, 
Me texted her, hey, Portia, I hope you're doing well. I'm shocked <laughs> to hear that we have issues and you didn't want to work with me. Wow. Just wow. We have double dated a few times. Vegas, Miami, your home. It's sad to hear. We have hung out in Dubai. You were texting me about housewives. This is sad. We are Black women that need to work, not st stopping each other from working. So Portia did not want to hear that at all. Portia said, yeah, all of that and through all this, and this is your first text. How and who and how the fuck do you not even check on Lil Sis enough? You said, okay, enough said. You chose a side, and I'm good with that. People weird as fuck. I've shown loyalty time and time. I've also shown, shown concern and genuine love during all of your hardships, but I never get it back. It's cool, though. When people move differently, so do I. Nene hits back with, you are wrong in every way. You went extremely too far. Nothing you are saying is valid enough to go to a production company and say you do not want to work with Nene because we have issues in the past. I gave you your space. I didn't want to invade your privacy. I didn't want to seem nosy. I wanted to wait until I see you in person. I was excited about working with you. As far as Naomi and Simon are concerned, they have their own relationship and I had nothing to do with that. So that's a pretty intense exchange right there. It's clear that Portia is hurt that Nini and her man are still friends with Simon and she feels that Nini should have reached out to her. In between the argument and the release, the releasing of the text messages, Nini hung out with her boyfriend and Simon and his new team and the pictures hit the internet. Now people are like, Nini is messy. But then some people are like, this might be messy, but not messy enough for Portia to try to stop Nini's bag in a way. Meanwhile, I peeped, I don't know if y'all peeped, but I peeped, Cynthia Bailey received a bouquet from Wanda Sykes and she tagged the Upshaws. So it turns out, I think, Portia left and then Cynthia came in and she has a spot now. So we will be seeing Nini and Cynthia, who we just saw in BMF, on the Upshaws. What do you think about this, Aaron? <laughs> They're funny as hell. That's first and foremost. They are funny as hell. I don't think it definitely, it, it doesn't. There's no need for Portia and Nini to be in it this deep. It's not that serious. I just feel like it's not that serious. And honestly, they were just in Dubai, which is what's so confusing to me about the whole situation. And that's why I'm going to say I don't believe it. So what do you think it is? A storyline. Four. I think that Portia texted Nini and was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> you take a picture with him, and then I'm going to pretend to be mad at you, and then I'm going to say I don't want to work with you on the Upshaws, and then we're going to put that out to the press, and everybody's going to think we have a beef, and maybe they'll be like, okay, we need her, because this is a good beef. And which it is, and it was very smart to do, but I just don't see it working. Cause I'm like, if if it hasn't worked, like Nini already has enough to have to deliver such a good storyline. Nini has a new man. She's doing all this stuff on Zeus with baddies. And then to me, I would like to see that kind of play out on Bravo, seeing her do certain things and then go back to Bravo. I think that would be really cool. You know, she made up with Cynthia Bailey. She's She was cool with Portia. She's pretty much cool with everybody, I think, except for Kenya. So it would have been nice to see. Like, but I don't think it's going to work. So you genuinely think that this is for a storyline? Yeah. Okay. I just don't. Okay. It's too much. It's like they were in Dubai. And now Nini's taking pictures with Simon and this new lady. Who is this new lady? Oh, that's a whole different And lady. why oh. is Simon showing his ass like this on Instagram? The only reason that we know about Simon is because of Portia. 
We want to know about Simon because of Fallon. No shade to Fallon. But that's just what it is. You're right. That's what it is. Because we didn't even remember who Simon was until that thing happened and we find out that Portia was going to marry him or they were together. All of this is just like, it's a bit much. And every time I see news about it, I'm just like, okay. I would feel a lot better if what you were saying is true and it's for a storyline. Like, if the cameras are rolling. But I don't see no cameras rolling. So that's yeah. why I'm concerned because... Well, they gotta set it up. They gotta set it up. Because the cameras aren't gonna roll and then it's like... Portia just comes out of nowhere and she's like, I'm not fucking with Nene no more. Because they're not, most likely they wouldn't air that anyway because it's associated with Nene. I think this is being done to get them like out of the that awkward position that they, they're in with Nene where they're like, oh, we don't want to work with her. Mm -hmm. So maybe if these they see these text messages and they see all this drama, they'll be like, oh, okay, maybe we do need to stop dicking around and fucking painting our toenails and get people on the show that people actually care about and we wouldn't have to go to fucking Charles Oakley and Angela to see if they want to be on the show. And then Shamia... Come on, man. Get out of here. Okay. That is definitely a very fair... I, I hope that's what's happening. I hope, I hope they hope listen to... A return for Mimi. And I know that we sound delusional, but we will talk about it until we're blue in the mother effing face. I know they're, t I know they're tired of me. I know they're tired. They're like, Aaron, leave this Nene shit alone. And I love y'all for real, but guess what? What else are we going to see? Do you want to see? I want to, and to those people who are questioning me about Nene Leaks and being on this show, do you want to see Charles Oakley and Angela, what's her name? Angela Reed? Not Angela Yee. Angela Reed. Angela McGee and Charlamagne. Do you want to see that? Do you want to see Charles Oakley cooking lamb chops? You can see that on YouTube if you want to see it. The only Angela I want to see is Bassett. If they can get her on Atlanta. Right. And I doubt. <laughs> I doubt that Angela Bassett after just doing after the, the <laughs> yeah, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So uh, that's my uh, but I just I just hope that's the way they were going because I think it's kind of all real. And that's Vanessa what, Hudgens. So. I would like to see Vanessa Hudgens on Housewives of Atlanta. Baby V. Baby V. She has a storyline. She she's literally, she's literally black now. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Get Vanessa Hudgens and Anne Hathaway and put them on the Housewives. Miss nigga and Hathaway. <laughs> Please don't start. All right, let's move oh. forward. Oh, okay, okay. I was just trying to... Yeah, sure. no, let's move forward. I don't know who, <laughs> what's going on right now. <laughs> because you play a lot, and if you want to play, we'll play. But you didn't have to play like that. I do feel I like now I get what Nini means. Like, okay. Let's move on to some important things that we have not been able to discuss because we had so much content, which I love uh, having, obviously, on Bravo. We have not, I've, I've got to get Aaron's opinion. Y'all know that I watch faithfully every week. Now Aaron is caught all the way up. I hope y'all have been watching. If not, you know, we don't have Beverly Hills rolling anymore. Uh, Married to Medicine is no longer rolling anymore. <laughs> Get into Summer House, regular Summer House. I want to ask, though, I have two questions, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm already laughing. Like, number one, I want to start off by saying we're going to Cowfish because they made that clear at least 18 damn times that that's the <laughs> restaurant that they were going to go to. Listen, for some free... We're going to Cowfish, guys. We're going to Cow... Like, are you guys ready? 
some calamari and some fucking some zucchini chips. I'll say, I'll name drop yeah. I'll name like, I'm not gonna lie, and those games look fun. It does look like a good vibe. Um, <laughs> I want to know: Are you related to Wes Wilson? Oh my god! Everyone has been asking me the same thing because. He's funny. I'm funny. We have the same last name. Mm-hmm. We kind of look alike, too. You guys do. Yeah. No. So we're not actually related. Um, but I was doing my ancestry. And I. it was... It, l- listen, listen, listen. It was St. Patrick's Day. And I... I, I knew you were going here. Irish, a couple percent Irish. I knew you were going here. And you know he could, if he would just spit in the tube, send that back. Uh, you know we could find out if we if we could be, you know, who his people is, Wes. So if, if you, you got, guys aren't related, would you date him? Um, I think that he's very funny. I think that he's very funny, but the way that he acts with Sierra. I don't like a dude that like talks. He talks too much. Like, why does everyone know that we made out with Tom? Uh-uh. Okay. I would actually kind of like probably like kill, like walk over him, kind of. Okay. But he's a very handsome, funny guy. I think he's a good guy, and I like seeing Sierra with him. I agree. Those are my two questions. <laughs> Messy <laughs> as hell. Are you related? And if you're not related, would you date? <laughs> Like, literally, that's how I have it written. <laughs> that's exactly how I have it written, guys. That was my number one. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to ask this. The main idea, the plot, if you will, yep. yes, is Lindsay and Kyle. Mm-hmm. Listen. Be honest though, did you expect? Because I was telling you, like, I'm like, Aaron, you need to watch it because it's not boring. Like, it's actually Lindsay's on one. She did is. you go and think that it was only like that first episode where it was just going to be an argument or whatever? And then later on, we'll see them have problems. Did you, were you surprised when you watched all three episodes and each episode was like intense? I'm not surprised that she started with her bullshit at all, but I'm surprised that she kept it going after like redeeming herself. Like that first time that it happened, everybody's like, you know what? Fine. Okay. We all had too many drinks. We wanted to know if he was a a crackhead. Got your answer. It's fine. She was like mm-hmm. coked out Carl, the Coke goblin, love after Coke up. Like she literally said all of that that particular night. And I was forgiven. She, she called comes... that she called that boy Cocaine Carl. Like right. it, it just rolled off her tongue. How long have you been saying it? That's my question. Because you don't just you don't well, just you come up with those things like that. Like, okay, you can be sharp at the tongue, sure, but an alliteration like cocaine, Carl, that's not an. Honest and who spot. are you discussing it with? In that house, is it Kyle? Because remember, and yeah. Samantha's the first to tell you. Remember when Kyle was like, he came to the office one day and he forgot his laptop. And it reminded me of when he was on. He came in so coked out. And I'm like, like that was crazy. That but was that's crazy. what I'm saying. And then it's like, the first time I'm like, okay. And then the second time, literally, and they didn't even show it because the camera guys were like, not this time. Like, she's on her fucking own. Like, no, we're not doing this. They literally cut the cameras off. And they're like, can you stop? Because... <laughs> It's not even that type of show. Like, we are not on Love After Lockup. We are on the Bravo Network. Stop accusing this man of doing coke. And she's like, are you on dr- Why are you treating me this way? Are you on drugs? Like, what are you on? What are you looking? What are you on? Like, and, and he's looking at her like, bitch, stop. Because, and <laughs> like, I have a very um, eclectic personality 
when I'm not like let's just say she was accusing me of being drunk and I'm not drunk because I I don't I can't relate to the drunk thing but let's on a drunken level if I was sober and someone kept accusing me of being drunk and I wasn't drunk it would feel like I'm drunk because I'd be so mad Mm -hmm. like stop fucking saying that stop saying that and then on top of that what tequila or whatever she was drinking that night makes you accuse someone of being a fucking drug addict? Like, what? What? Take it off the shelf. Stop drinking it. Well, give it to me. I'll keep it safe. God goodness! And then she's and then- like, "Are you drawing? You you smoke weed? You smoke weed?" And it's like, even if he did. I don't want to talk about it. Well, I think what makes me like uh, not annoyed, but it's just such a sensitive subject because one, we know that he's sober, right? Or California sober. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing that he does is smoke. So he's California sober one. So that's very tricky to accuse a person who is sober of being not sober, but then to say it on camera, to say it in front of his friends and keep repeating it. And then two, you also know that he lost someone close to him because of drugs. Why do you keep saying it? That's my biggest thing with her. And then the fact that when this man pulls you to the side and gives you, because I want to give her the opportunity. After the second time, I would have been like, you're on your own. We're done. Because you're not going to keep accusing me of doing coke on TV when that was my storyline last season. And I'm trying to get a job at the new post office this season. Like you're not going to keep doing that to me. Not the post office. Guys, you do have to test clean for the post office. So I don't know if anyone has a job there, but you're not going to keep doing that to me. And then standing 10 toes down on it. Like, and yeah. Telling other people. And, and getting in like, the camera, like coming, walking towards the camera and was like. I don't, like, I can do. you believe this guy? Fucking crack coke. <laughs> Jesus, Lindsay, like, give it a break. Calm down. And then you can tell her ass funny. It's nothing. It's not funny at all. But like, if you. If you detach yourself from the situation, like watching watching it, it's not funny. It's like can like I'm cringing. I'm like, can she right. stop? Stop. Can you shut it. the fuck up. Are you on coke? Like, why do you keep saying that? Is that? what I want to know. Why do you and know? why do you keep getting drunk like that? It seems like Lindsay, and I've been saying this, Lindsay is the problem, and she does not realize how condescending she comes off. And then as soon as Carl reacts and starts yelling, because you keep accusing him of doing this shit on camera, and this is going to air on TV, she's like, why are you yelling at me? What's wrong with you? Why are you treating me like this? Because you're acting fucking weird. That's what you're doing. You're being weird. You're being weird as hell. And honestly, I don't know how he didn't. I'm not gonna say that. Let me choose my words. Oh, I know. I I I have, I have my telepathic powers. I know what you want to say, and you don't have to say it. It's understood. That is but crazy. You have a lot of self control because if he yeah. was on coke, you'd be in trouble. Because <laughs> one thing you're not gonna do is tell a cokehead that they're on coke. Right. It and I'll just and it would not go good. And then do it again the next <laughs> weekend. Because he ruined the you whole would think, You would think long and hard actually. Yeah, before it that wouldn't roll off your tongue. Not like that. And then the people in the house are being good to her. Even Gabby's pulling her to the side. Amanda tried pulling her to the side, like, girl, don't you think like Amanda's so stressed out like she's like i'm trying to eat my ramen noodles she's trying to eat her noodles she's trying to do a face mask she's trying to like chill out and she's like don't you think like you should like stop maybe (laughs) and Lindsay's because she's so nice about it and Lindsay's like no i'm not gonna fucking stop like and she keeps doing it and even gabby pulls her to the side like yeah bro 
Yeah. This and is you know the second what? time. You know what's insane is that I I should have known that Lindsay was on one when it was the first episode and they weren't there, right? Because they came mm-hmm. later, like, like the White House or something like that. And Gabby was like, I didn't even know that Lindsay and Carl was, weren't here. And I'm like, damn. That's a sign that you're for, like you be on some shit. But um, you know what? And I wanted to say, like after the first time she said, I literally have it in my notes, guys. Mm-hmm. I said, sober Lindsay is attempting to make amends in the household, and it seems like she's striving to be a better person. Like I noticed her taking initiative to be more engaged and involved and like build onto the relationships that she has even with the whole page thing they showed that little t- that little fight that they had and she yeah. was like you know i never want to go there again it seems like she's moving and being intentional and i i love that but as soon as she has like a shot of patron it's like she leaves she literally blacks out and she's like what the fuck are you on <laughs> She looks directly at Carl and he's like, what are you talking about? Like Carl's just chilling in the backseat, like bobbing, probably feeling, you know, feeling good and shit. And she's like, what are you on? <laughs> Did you smoke? What are you doing coke? <laughs> and it's like, no. And it's always like the <laughs> reasons that she, like when she's explaining it, Cause usually when you're sober, you can look back and be like, "Damn, I was tripping." She has like she's just like, "Okay, can you believe that when I told him that I think it was going to be weird that I didn't ride in the girl's car because that was her reasoning for thinking that you know everything was going to go wrong, that he did not agree with me and say that it was going to be weird." And then the second time, she was like, "I don't know. He just wanted to leave." Can you believe he wanted to leave? And I'm like, okay, so oh, what? what is the correlation to him not agreeing with you and him wanting to leave to being on cocaine? Cocaine. I don't know what it is. I guess, child, if you don't agree with Lindsay, you're on coke. You're on drugs. You're a druggie. Well, like, I, I think it's, he has a history with it. So I can understand, like, from someone. Who, but it's too much. And she will make someone, and I hate to say it that way, but when you do things like that, you could possibly make someone relapse because they're questioning their own motives. Yeah, they're questioning their own motives and you're stressing them out because now they feel like they have to constantly prove themselves. And I do believe that Carl is sober. Carl hasn't given me one reason to think that he's not sober. Is he a little high off the pot sometimes? Maybe so. Like, has he had a few beers? Maybe so. But he's not, like, raging and breaking beer bottles and shit at the door and stomping on them. And, like... Well, he said, he said um, if you want to... Like, I'll drink 16 Lover Boys right now, and I'll show you someone who's not right. sober. And I was right. like, wait. <laughs> like, wait. But I get it, because he was at that mm-hmm. pool, and he's like, God damn. This girl okay. just ain't gonna stop. And then it's like he also he also just like he sucks it up. He's like, I'm going to try to put an end to this argument and I'm going to go and I'm gonna say sorry. So he'll suck it up and he'll try to end it, but then she was like, But do you not remember when you were like on Coke and you yelled at me? And it's like And bro. she makes him seem like the worst guy in the world. She's like, oh, you guys haven't seen Carl like how I've seen him. I'm like, no, because we're too busy looking at you. Like, and how crazy your ass is acting. Calm down. Like, it's not that serious. Even Amanda has calmed down a lot. And I think that's why Kyle is like, Kyle has gotten so much better. Yes, he gets drunk every now and then. But he's like, he's he's been a lot better. And Amanda, okay, so that's another thing that I wanted to point out, the great point that you made, is that Amanda has come with a brand new attitude. I think what happened was that she realized that Kyle is not really, no offense, he's not the prize. Like, they're married, they're, they have their company, she's always with him 24-7, he can be annoying as fuck, she wants to vibe with her friends, and she does not want the quality time with him. She wants to be at the summer house, eat her ramen noodles, and hang with the girls. Like, that's all she wants. She has calmed down so much because it's like, she doesn't have to constantly be his mother. She's like, I'm going to let him worry about it for mm-hmm. the 
time in my life. And I love that. Like she had this awakening, like, actually, this is a 41 year old fucking man. Mm -hmm. We're already married. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's going to happen. And you guys are at the summer house. That's kind of what it's meant for. You get drunk, you have fun, and you have good times. You, I don't want to say black out, but you know, sometimes the shit. If like, you do, you do. You do, you do. I think I it, it, Amanda's like, a little bit of the, of the annoying one this season, like constantly. Mm -hmm. Do you, you want to hang out? Do you want to, do you want, like, I see you all week. Leave me alone. Get out of my face. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hang out. I don't want to work. I need my own space. Like, she's wrong. I need, I need, I need my own space. Period. It's just yeah, Amanda is definitely giving me, she quit the job at Urban Outfitters and now she has moved on to <laughs> the perfume shop in the middle of the mall. <laughs> is that the is that the energy that she gives now yeah she gives me that because amanda used to give me like stressed out urban outfitters like packed ass day at urban outfitters <laughs> like where they're just throwing and tossing shit all around like she was so stressed out but now it seems like she's like i'm done with all of that yeah and i'm just chilling stand. yeah yeah so um the new guys was hilarious uh, the the tall one he has a really uh ins inspiring story you know he went through cancer mm -hmm. and i think that his story is important because it reminds men that you guys need to go to the fucking doctor because men don't go mm -hmm. to the doctor as much as they should go to the doctor um i also think it's cute to see him in sierra go on the dates. I like the, you know, the back to the OG format where they're doing stuff during the week and they're coming back in the house. I like seeing Gabby. She's more, um, you know, mm -hmm. vibing with the girls. I love Paige there, but I didn't miss Paige on the last episode. Just maybe because Lindsay and, and Carl and, and then everyone's trying to be there for Carl too. Uh, even the new guy, he's like, hey, so is she always like that? And Carl's like, well, kind of and like he brought up a good i'm not gonna say that he's the cause of the calling off of the engagement but he made a good ass point when he asked carl hey is she always like that and then carl was like yeah so he was like so then you signed up for it and carl was like damn yeah no even that That's ate my ass up i was like wow like touche he's right but i see why carl left her ass oh I didn't mean to say it like that. Lord, I <laughs> no, you're right. But, but, like, it's I see why much. Carl stepped away from that situation because it's too much. I don't wish that on anybody because I do believe that Lindsay cares about him and that she, when she's sober, I think she looks out for his best interests. But it's like when she has that drink, she does not care. She is the villain. She is the enemy. She's the and worst we see thing. Her all day. Yeah. It's like, so maybe you need to drink some water and set a better example and stop accusing your man of doing coke every time you get fucking a little shit face. That's weird to me. This is your man. This isn't like, it's not like she's accusing somebody else of doing it. Like, maybe if she didn't like somebody, she's like, hey, you know, why not? Yeah. Like, this is your man. You got to go to bed with him. You got to keep doing that. Do you want a man? Maybe she just did this because she didn't want him anymore. That's a great theory. I never Cause heard that. I, and but... I would say try a different approach. Like, because yeah. this one is really weird, but I, I just don't know. It's The whole thing was very strange. And even when he tried to explain himself to her and she just refused to take accountability or listen, it was just like, you can't tell this girl nothing. Listen. It's too late. The first time she said it, I remember it was late as hell at night. It was literally like 1 a.m. Because I was watching, it was, it's Thursday, so I watched Jersey Shore. It was, um, I think it was like the Traders finale or something, the first time it came on. Or either Traders was still on. So like I had other stuff to watch first. So then I finally come around to the episode and like the end is where it like just gets really good 
because she's just like, he's acting like when he was on drugs. He's acting like <laughs> cocaine Carl. And, and, I, and I love and I'm like, wait, did I hear that? And then they put it in the captions. So they were like, no, yes, she said that. She like said they that. Put it on the captions so we could hear it. And then you just see Carl come in confused as <laughs> But Lindsay is like also, Lindsay is one of those like friends that you have, or maybe not even friends, but like one of the girls that you know at this party that you go to, and she's wilding. Like you guys go on a couple's trip, and she's the one that's like outside smoking a cigarette. And she's like, "Hey, did you see that shit back there?" And you're like, "No, what are you talking about? I'm having and a crazy time." She's doing fucking drugs <laughs> in the room. While me and the baby are trying to sleep. And you're like, what baby? And she's like, what? This baby and a baby appears. <laughs> and then you realize you're actually the one that's fucked up. And you realize that she's Maggie Gyllenhaal and you guys are in a Kmart. Oh my God. That just stressed me out so much. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? That's how it felt at 1 a.m. when it first happened. Like, and it was just dark around me, and I had no one to talk to. Um, but okay, Maggie so Gyllenhaal <laughs> at a Kmart. You guys live there also. But, like, it's like... <laughs> the last episode, Carl tries to make, like, the best of it. And he goes, and he just, like, jumps in the pool. <laughs> It's the funniest shit to me because I cannot imagine arguing with someone and accusing them of being on coke and then they just come outside and they jump in the pool and then they ask Sierra like how was my how was my how was my dive? And then Sierra's like it was good, it was like an 8.76. That would piss me off so bad because he's just like, I'm here to have a good time. Because she was so busy worrying about what what is it? <laughs> Cowfish. Like Sierra Damn, you gotta tell me, girl, what you get when you go. Please because she see error out of everybody. See, error was like, we have reservations at Cowfish. Uh, I don't give a fuck what you, you or any of you have going on. Because when it's time to go, mm -hmm. we need to be dressed and we need to be ready. And guess what? They got their ass in their car mm -hmm. and they were going. And weren't they even Sierra was like We're <laughs> Like, we have to go. The traffic. Listen, the I-10 by 10. I-10 by 10. And I don't blame her, because when they got there, I'm like, okay, wow, this is like, a, you know, I would like to be here, too. <laughs> you could tell it's a good time, because look at Lindsay. Like, you could tell it's a good-ass time. They make those drinks strong as fuck wherever they are. Like, I need a drink like that immediately. Immediately. Shit. Immediately. Like. Damn. Yeah, that's Summer House, y'all. Let us know. Um, do you think <laughs> Carl's... No, I'm just kidding. I don't think that he's on coke at all. I think that Lindsay needs to calm down. I think that that is very hurtful to say to someone who you know is being sober and has lost someone in drugs. And also, like... It just doesn't seem like she didn't release an apology, but it just the apology and then knowing that she was gonna do it again, like didn't add up to me. Um, so I think that it boils down to this one question that everyone has been debating. And I wanna know your answer first. Do you think she was actually blindsided when Carl broke up with her? No. There's no way you can be blindsided. The only re the only reason she's saying that I feel is because she doesn't care. She's not really looking at it because she's too busy, like running her mouth, sitting on the steps of cowfish, talking about how this man is still like how he needs to pretty much eat her ass because that's how she felt. She's like, you know, you were being short with me. I felt like you were on drugs. It is what it is. Like, no big deal. And it he's like, it is a huge deal. Like, bitch, my mom is watching this. So we're not going to just keep saying that I'm... I want boy. Andy Cohen to honestly pull her to the side, though, during the reunion and really have a talk with her. Like, hey, you cannot do that. Like, that's... 
this is not that type of show where you can keep like accusing somebody of that. Her man, if that's her man or not, that doesn't matter to me. Like you can't do that. It's unacceptable. Apologize now. Okay, so yeah, that that's the pot series, you guys. Like They're comparing him to Sandoval. Oh my god, that it, that sent me through the roof. Like BFFR. Is Wait a minute, gaslighting people. It's you, bitch. Like, what are you talking She's about? She's Sandoval. You're Sandoval. Mm. And I wanted to say something else, but I'm not going to say it. But like, don't accuse me of some shit that you acting like you own. Oh, that's all I'll say. Well, oh. we're going to move forward. <laughs> Let's get into Married to Medicine. Married to Medicine. Um, yes. Yes, it finally ended. But, like, okay. like I'm move. happy. Yeah. Yeah, no, let's move on. Like, it ended. I feel like it- I didn't mean to say I didn't mean to say it like that, guys. I just want... <sighs> Dr. Simone has been so annoying to me. (laughs) It's depressing. You know, and as the show continued, it's like, is she always like this? Like, is she going to continue? Has she been like this this whole time? I don't think so. I think it was just... Well, I think she does have her seasons where she's more vocal than others. But this season, she was just really, like... Because even when Heavenly was like, hey, like, I was just telling you that Jackie is hurt by what, you know, you wanted to go to Hallhead, Hallhead or Hilton Head or whatever the fuck shit is called. And she's like, I don't give a fuck about how you feel. I'm like. Heavenly even said before you start yelling. (laughs) Because it's like, who said anything? Like, nobody said anything bad. She just w- wanted you to be aware that, hey, your friend is hurt. Acknowledge it. Well, I will say that Heavenly is messy, and she didn't present it like that. Uh, uh, of course not. Happened. But to your point, Simone is just, like, not willing to let anything go, whether it's quad, whether it's when is it going to be tomorrow's time to take accountability? I don't At know. It's supposed to be Jackie's time and she still didn't say shit. Hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 um, Dr. Alicia got Toya's ass all the way together. Love that. Because Toya, I love you, but you were kicking in a little bit too hard at everything. And you thought you were going to, you know, call Dr. Alicia and her husband out. And she was like, well, I'm not going around being dissatisfied with my husband's penis size. That's you. And it was the truest read that I've heard during the, the whole reunion, honestly, mm-hmm. because Toya was the one that was going around talking about that, she, you know, she said it, I think she said it either one or two times that she wanted her husband's dick to be bigger. Like, and I don't know, that's just something that you don't walk around saying, but I thought it was fair. Now, Dr. Okay, Alicia, you, honest. Yeah, it was unnecessary. But, like, it's been years, girl. Come on. Like, just cheat already then. Oh, that's what she... Did I say that out loud? I mean, I just feel like she should solve the problem. <laughs> what? Instead of... I, like, that was crazy, I'm... too, because I'm like, what did she just say? <laughs> and then the fact that I just agreed with it so quickly. Like, what is wrong with me today? <laughs> because it's like you get tired of hearing the same thing sometimes. It's like, okay, yeah, right, just, dead, you like, want to do it, just do it. Just cheat on you, it. Are you letting us know in advance, like, why? So when it She's happens, like, I <laughs> am going to cheat on my husband, and we are going to get a divorce. Wait. I never said anything about a divorce. I'm just yeah. saying, if there was a cheating storyline, I think that we've been primed 
to understand because she constantly talks about well, that's why you should not be dissatisfied anyway, because her husband puts up with all her shenanigans and house, has for years. I mean, come on. Like, he, <laughs> she knows she better not ever try that man like that. She shouldn't at all. Now, Dr. Alicia, you did lose me when you talked about being a dentist and how y'all are like... um really up in people's mouth like you know everything about that and I get that and I respect your profession and what mm-hmm. you and your husband are but I don't think they got nothing to do with sucking dick yeah cause Heavenly is also a dentist and she is, is in everyone's mouth in Atlanta well she's apparently Dr. Alicia said she's a step above like she's oh, they're okay. doing more Are yeah sure? yeah they're doing more than that but even That's still what, what, what we talking about yeah, because we're not. I don't even want to. I don't know. Can we say that? You you just said something, Dick. Like you said the words already. Oh, I was gonna say worse. But, oh, um, and eating ass. We've no, eating- oh. no, I was Sorry. not gonna say that. But Sorry. it's like you're not getting your throat pounded. I think that's the nicest way to say it. You know, <laughs> you're not getting that. Like we're not talking about a regular stuff. Like we're talking about normal like you know I just okay I just want to say it I do not I could not be in and like she said it to Toya like this is my marriage I could not be in her marriage at all period Dot. But that's it but she she also said that they do kind of be sucking each other and stuff like that it's just like not all the time like that's what she said so I'm like no. so which one is it because y'all seem like y'all lying now either yeah, you yeah. sucking dick or you not He's 100% DJ Khaled. He believes that he should get head and he should not be giving head. That's the situation. And that's insane. Right. But um. But she's happy with it. So fuck it. She loves it. Yeah. If you like it, I love it. Uh, uh, I it more, but whatever. I do too. I think she would be so much like, I don't know. But I do like Dr. Alicia. I would like to see her back, actually. Because I do think this, like, when she woke up, I think after that reunion, she was like, you know what? I'm tired of this shit. Like, really? These bitches are pissing me off. And that's why she was on live. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> her and the Heavenly were really getting into some things. And that's why I was like, okay. Really? Good. Yeah. <laughs> bring her back. Like, I like that. Um it seems like they also confirmed the cast because uh, according to Phaedra, she's setting up the next couple's trip. And I was like, oh, okay. So you just know you're going to be on this next season, huh? <laughs> she do. She does. Because <laughs> she knows that if she's not going to be on Married to Medicine, then she's going to be on Atlanta regardless. So she's probably just going to recycle the trip. You're right. Regardless, we're going to wherever <laughs> I want to go to. So and that's what's that. going you're right. on that show, just tell me what time to show up. Which is and contract. that's it. That's it. They you right about live. that. Oh, watch what happens live. And Quad was, I know that Quad didn't sign her contract yet, but I don't know. She was very funny and happy on Watch What Happens Live to not be signing a contract. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, either you got that contract signed or you're heading to Housewives of Atlanta. Like, which one? Could you imagine? I would like to see it. I wouldn't mind it. Like, Quad, I would be okay with. I would love it. I'd yeah, not pref- I wouldn't prefer it, but I would love it. Cause I would, you know, that's something I would like to see. Um, Phaedra and Apollo. I I love it for them. I'm happy for them. I like that they are getting along and they have a healthy co-parenting relationship. And he's very nice to look at. Yes, and I feel like he's not really over her. He's not over Phaedra. You got that too? Because when Andy said, oh, if, if like it was about like the marriage, like she was saying, like, oh, if, maybe if I was with this group of women, my marriage would have ended differently, or it, maybe not. It mm-hmm. wouldn't have ended, maybe, because they are repairing relationships where she may feel on housewives, they help you tear it down. And then Andy asked Apollo, how do you feel about that? He's like, I didn't even know that was an option. It's, and to me, that sounded like, hey, you want to mm-hmm. get back together right now? 
Right. And give these people a real because, show. Right. And I would love to see it. Actually. And if Mary to Medicine has the power to do that, then baby <laughs> air for 20 more seasons. Because <laughs> that is something else. Because, yeah, it seemed like they were very much... And even when uh, they were bringing up the history between Phaedra and Greg, uh, Gregory, he was Greg really... Was very weird. And he wanted... Because he, he lied, lied about that. He lied about that. But then he also was just like... I don't know. Like His wife was there. And he was saying inappropriate shit about both Phaedra and Quad, I feel. <laughs> Poor sweet tea. That's all I can say, child. Um, but I that was that. married to medicine, y'all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was. It's a good show. It's it. No, but for real, it was a good show. I'm just glad it's over with. Now, yeah. like, let's figure out what we're gonna do for next season. Next season, please take time. Take your time. Don't rush. Like, <laughs> please do not rush. Because the stuff that I'm hearing with Atlanta, I'm like, maybe we need to take another few months <laughs> to get it right. Maybe you guys, in the meantime, just put out, like, another season of um, Southern Charm Nola. Can you, please? We've been asking for a long time. Bravo. I think Bravo also needs a dating show. Like, do they not feel inspired to do, like, a... A kind of like a mix of like love is blind and ready to love, like a mix of that. Ooh, you know what? I actually like fell asleep on a show and Love Match Atlanta started playing, and I was like, maybe not a season two on Bravo, but I feel like Bravo should sell that show to own. Yeah, but then nephew Tommy would be really pissy about that. Well, it's just about matchmakers, though. It's not because like he's like. It's a dating show. <laughs> we got that covered in Playboy. <laughs> you could tell you would say it just like that. <laughs> Me and my wife, do we go to the bedroom and we got that down. So ain't no need for that. Like, don't don't be bringing that on. Not too uh, much. And then you tell me comes back quick. Like, every month, He's on I feel every like... But he's like another season of Ready to Love. Get your ass up and go in that living room and pop you some popcorn because they about to come on. <laughs> and Carlos King too. I'm like, Loving Mirrors Huntsville, Loving Mirrors DC, and it's gotten to the point where they're like every Saturday, like every single Saturday. I am so. I need to check it out and you go back. And check it out because I'm so enamored with his interviews. Now yeah. that marriage is over with, now I have time for love and marriage. Because he just had Toya and Simone on an interview. It, that's what I'm saying. And like, I found that funny because I know he was real pissy about Simone calling him a blogger. And I was like, I'm ready for them to get into <laughs> I'm ready exactly. for them to get into that. But you guys. Uh, the potster. Whose side are you on? Are you team Lindsay or team Carl? I'm obviously team Carl. That boy got he was he was barking mm -hmm. this episode. He got that dog in him. So watch out. I'm team Carl too. I'm sorry. But all right, y'all. Go to the same shit and, and I'm not doing that shit like i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry team carl y'all let us know we love you uh thank you for listening we will be back for the pop culture episode where we will definitely be picking up on a few things because a few things come out this weekend um we'll talk to you soon we love you bye bye